All right, everyone. Here we go. Triple chart method unlocked. This is going to be a long video. This video is intended to be studied and to be re reviewed over and over again. Uh, the reason I say that this video is the triple chart method unlocked is because I'm going to go into further detail on this video than I have in any of the previous videos covering the triple chart method. I'll leave you with this video this week to digest and hopefully it brings you a lot of value because I placed a lot of time trying to figure out how to present this information. So you're going to get your money's worth with this one. Uh, this is this is going to be a good video. So let's just dive right into it. Let's get started. The triple chart method unlocked. So this is a method that can be used for trade entries or for market analysis or predictive purposes. It's really how I look at it. It works best with swing trading, in my opinion, not something that I would try to do day trading with uh, a lot of intraday trading, not something that uh, will work as well. I just I haven't seen the results with it uh, with short term trading like I have with longer term swing trading. So this will this will require access to customizable chart time frames and will require the use of up to eight charts simultaneously. So you want to make sure that you have a trading platform that allows you to do that. So we have some listed here, trading view, trade station, thinkers. Those are some good options for us. We will also need a larger monitor, monitor or multiple monitor setup, uh, which will make this a lot easier for us to do. These are the monitors that I use. These are the 49 inch Samsung monitors. Uh, is it Samsung? Yeah, it's Samsung. So these are pretty good. I have two of these set up. Um, I'm able to really see my charts pretty well. They're 49 inches, um, so they're, they are a beast of a monitor, but they're really good because they don't have the seams. I've always hated the seams that separate like 22 inch monitors or 27 inch monitors. I like the continuity left to right. And then just stack one on top of each other, one on top of the other with um, a monitor stand. But if you buy a monitor stand, make sure it holds the weight. Those are heavy monitors. Um, I had to go through several stands and then actually kind of <laughs> had to customize my stand a little bit. So the time frames that we will be using simultaneously will be the weekly, sometimes the two day, the daily, four hour, 148 minute, 92 minute, 57 minute, 35 minute, and 22 minute. And you will want the ability to chart those all simultaneously. Indicators that we will use. The PM indicator, we will use this as our oscillator of choice and the PM bull bear candles. Now others can be added, but the two above are the bare minimum. So if you want to add other indicators to help you with your analysis or to add to your confidence, totally fine. If you don't have access to the two indicators above, you can always manually determine bullish or bearish control and use the stochastic slow and stock RSI indicators in place of the PM indicator. You always have that option, but I have the PM indicator just to try to make life a little bit easier on you. All right, so here it is. The this is the 10 step process. Now, you know, <laughs> I don't typically do steps like this, but I'm trying to take a complex, a, a, a complex methodology that I use in the market and I'm trying to simplify it as much as I can to where it's understandable. So in this video, we are going to dive into each of these 10 steps and talk about them further. All right. So getting started. Step one, determine the trend. All right, so there's a lot of ways to determine trends, but my favorite is the bullish and bearish control method. And the concept is simple. Using only a weekly chart, now that's a weekly chart for this method, okay? We'll look at the colors, opening prices, and closing prices of the last closed candle. So bullish control to review. I know a lot of you already know this and understand this, but bullish control consists of a green candle that closes above the most recently closed red candles opening price, all right? Bullish control is maintained until bearish control is established. So we will stay in bullish control until we go into bearish control. And we are always either under bullish or bearish control. Now, bearish control consists of a red candle that closes below the open of the most recently closed green candles opening price. Bearish control is maintained until bullish control is established. So let's look at some examples. Again, bullish control consists of a green candle that closes above the most recently closed red candles opening price. Bullish control is maintained until bearish control is established. So this is what this looks like. Notice how the green candles close is above the most recent red candles open. That establishes bullish control, which will stay in place until bearish control is established. Bearish control establishing itself looks like this. It is a red candle that closes below the open of the most recently closed green candles. All right, so bearish control is maintained until bullish control is established. 
All right, so for step one, we use the control that was established at the close of the last weekly candle. So if this is the current weekly candle and it's Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, we will use the previously closed candle. If it's Friday and it's very close to the close, we can use this week's candle because it's not likely to change bullish or bearish control. But in all other cases, we look at the most recently completed candle to establish bullish or bearish control. Um, if you have access to the PM bullish bearish candles, you have this step covered automatically because white will be an uptrend and red will be a downtrend and it would look like this. There's your bullish control and your bearish control. All right, so step two is observe the oscillators and let's dive into that. Again, you can use the oscillator of your choice, but I like the stock RSI and the stochastic slow. And for this step, we'll use the PM indicator. And you'll see that I've added a yellow line. That line is the slow line of the stock RSI indicator. And this will be a new selection within the settings of the PM indicator really soon. So members who have subscriptions to the indicators that will be updated for you, you can toggle that on and off. But essentially what you're seeing here on the screen with the lines is that this gray sometimes green, sometimes, so it's gray here, green and red. That's the slow line of the stochastic slow. The yellow line is the slow line of the stock RSI and the blue line is the fast line of the stock RSI. So what we're looking for specifically are overbought positions and situations and oversold positions and situations. A particular note is where the slowest indicator is and where the yellow line is. So what we're looking for is where we go oversold, which means that the values are below 20, or overbought, which means that the values are above 80. Those are the areas that we're paying attention to very specifically. And so starting with the slow line of the stochastic indicator, that's the gray line, on the PM indicator, we want to compare the two most recently oversold conditions. So this would be an oversold condition and this would be an oversold condition. We're looking for higher lows and lower lows comparing the price levels that correlate with the two most recently oversold conditions. So this is an oversold condition and this is the price level that correlates with that oversold position. Then if we come over here, we have another oversold position and this is the price level. Notice that this price level is higher than this price level. So this would be bullish, which is why this line turns green. That is built in and calculated for you with the PM indicator. All right, we wanna compare the most two recently oversold conditions and the two most recently overbought conditions and compare them and see if we are putting in higher lows or lower highs, which would be indicative of a trend as well, but we've already determined the trend using the weekly chart. This just gives us confluence. We then repeat the process with overbought positions and comparing the two most recently overbought conditions. We're looking for higher highs and lower highs. Sorry, we're looking for higher highs and lower highs compared to the price levels that correlate with the two most recently overbought conditions. So if we're looking at this position and this position, you can see if we follow the yellow line, this position is overbought at a lower price than this. This is moving to the downside, all right? This position is oversold at a higher price than it was previously oversold, up indication. This is overbought at a lower price than the previous time that it was overbought, which is lower than the previous time that it was overbought. And these are the things that we're notating and looking for. We're comparing the price that compares, that correlates with overbought and oversold signals, and we're looking for those lower highs and higher lows. So everything is code, color coded into the gray line to kind of do this for you when using the PM indicator. So the red is a lower high and the green is a higher low. The gray is a higher high or a lower low. We don't really pay a whole lot of attention to those, but we do that same process with the yellow line. And again, when the new indicator comes out or is updated, I'm gonna go ahead and color code that yellow line to reflect lower highs and higher lows as well so that we can see if it's a down indication or up indications. But that's what we're taking note of when we observe the oscillators. When we're done with that, we move to step three, which is waiting for triple chart setup. So let's talk about this. this. A triple chart setup is when three consecutive charts, now I've already laid out the, the time frames for you in a previous slide, we review those in order from largest to smallest. But it's when three consecutive charts agree with their oscillators giving lower highs or higher lows. So in this instance, if we come right here to the 148, we have three consecutive charts, 148, 92, 57. We can see that this is a higher low than previous. We compare this oversold area to this oversold area, this is higher. This oversold area to this oversold area, this is higher. This oversold to this oversold, the price is higher. So it's a, it's a higher low, higher low, higher low when using our oversold metrics on our indicator. And we have three of those that agree in a row, which makes it a triple chart, one, two, three. This is a triple chart setup. This is what we are looking for. This is why we are observing the oscillators. A triple chart setup is when three consecutive charts agree with their oscillators giving lower highs or higher lows. The first example was a bullish or up 
kind of indication that those would be your higher lows. Here's an indication of lower highs. 148, 92, 57. Notice that the price is not as high as it was previously, and this is where the oscillator is overbought. But notice here, we can't use this red oscillator. It never made it to an area of being oversold down here. But this one is went from overbought to oversold, back to overbought, and when it's back at overbought, it's lower than it was previous. Same story being told here, and it's the same story being told here as well. So this is a triple chart method to the downside side one two three that's the triple chart setup after we've notated our triple chart setups we then move to step four which is separating trend moves from counter trend moves so we need to figure out how we qualify trend moves and counter trend moves let's dive in separate trend moves from counter trend moves at this point the triple chart setup will either agree with the trend from the weekly chart or it will disagree if it agrees it is a trend trade if it disagrees, then it's a counter trend trade. So if you had weekly bullish control and then you had triple chart set up with higher lows, that would be a trend trade. This is an indication of that. All right. So we have your higher low. So we have the oscillator oversold, 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 previously oversold, previously oversold, previously oversold. The price is higher than previously, higher than previously, higher than previously. And we have bullish control using the last closed candle of the weekly chart, which was white. So the higher lows agree with the bullish control. So this is a trend trade because it's bullish control and triple chart higher lows. That is a trend trade. What does a counter trend trade look like? Well, if you had weekly bullish control and then you had triple chart lower highs, it would be a counter trend trade. Now, what I have notated here is actually not a perfect counter trend trade. And I thought I might show this because this is probably more common. Um, and it's something to be aware of. In this example, when we compare the two most recent highs, we're not putting in lower highs. All right, we're not putting in lower highs, we're putting in higher highs. We are under bullish control and we're putting in higher highs, but the oscillators are overbought and they will still move to the downside. So it's up to your discretion to count these with the higher highs or only pay attention to lower highs for counter trend trades when we're under bullish control. You can do either. I would suggest you back test and figure out which ones you would like to do and not do. If you're under weekly bearish control and we have a triple chart with lower highs, which it, this is a good example of, of, then that is a trend trade once again it's just a trend trade to the downside so we have weekly bearish control we have a lower highs lower highs lower highs and we have this confluence triple chart set up to the downside this is a triple chart trend trade to the downside and it is a very strong indication if you have weekly bearish control no you say, Trent, look, it's uh, highlighting a white candle. Yes, but we use the most previously completed candle, which would be a red candle, All right? So we have bearish control and we have triple chart higher lows. Now in this example, we actually do have higher lows. So this is a counter trend trade with higher lows in the face of bearish control. So it's up to you if you wanna do this as a counter trend trade. Uh, I just thought I would outline it and explain to you why it is a counter trend trade. It's because the movement on the triple chart method is against the prevailing trend of the weekly. So after we have determined what our trend is on the weekly, we observe the oscillators to find overbought, oversold areas, comparing price levels. Then we find three charts that are set up the proper way for a triple chart setup. Then we compare our triple chart setups to our trend indications that we found from step one. And that lets us separate our trend moves from our counter trend moves. Once we've done that, we can move to step five, which is determine the three charts that we will use and figure out what our exit chart is gonna be. All right, so how do we do that? At this point, I'd prioritize trend trades and figure out if you wanna do the counter trend trades or not. The trend trades are going to give you your best hit rate and your best return. However, you have to wait and wait and wait for those to show up sometimes. So it's up to you if you wanna do counter trend trades. And you need to determine the three charts that you will use for your trade. If you know it's going to be a counter trend trade or a trend trade, you need to figure out first if you're going to do counter trend trades. And if you're going to do a counter trend trade, then figure out what three charts that you are going to use. What three charts have given you the triple chart method that you want to use. I typically will only do a trade. This is an important note. I think you'll find success with this. I typically will only do a trade in which my largest chart of the three using a triple chart system is no less than the 148 minute chart. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that the smallest time frame or smallest triple chart setup I will use is a 148, 92, 57, okay? I'm not gonna do a 92, 57, 35. The smallest I will do is 148, 92, 57. 
I will totally do a four hour 148.92, that's fine, or a daily four hour 148 because those are larger, but the smallest triple chart I will do is 148.92.57 because I find those to be more accurate but less frequent. And there's usually three setups for that type of, if, if you use that as a rule, there's about three setups on the broad market indices, the SPY and the QQQ uh, for each month. So that maybe only 30 to 40 trades a year looking at it that way. Smaller triple chart setups can be used, like if you have a 57, 35, and a 22, but it'll likely be less accurate and less profitable. So I usually reserve observing that for the analysis purposes, just to give me an idea of what's likely to happen on smaller charts as I'm in larger chart trades. So the difference between trend and counter trend comes down to the exits and what charts we use for exits. So trend trades, we have a different exit than we will with counter trend trades. Um, and that's because counter trend trades can end so much more abruptly. They can take your head off because the your trading in the direction that is opposite of the prevailing trend or the prevailing current, which means that, again, you can get your head taken off. Trend trades, however, typically end pretty slowly. So we have different exit rules. So for trend trades, here are the exit rules. We exit using the middle time frame being used in the triple chart method. And with more skill, we can use the largest time frame. But to start, I would say use the middle time frame. Now, what I have here is the weekly chart, a 148 chart, a 92 minute chart, and a 57 minute chart. The yellow line, the vertical line, is showing you the exact entry point in a trend trade to the downside. And what I'm saying is 148.92.57. For this method, we will use the middle time frame as our exit chart. All right. So this is what we are looking at. This chart time frame and higher time frames for our exit if it is a trend trade. Now what we're looking at specifically is we exit when two conditions are met. And the first of those is that the middle time frame, which is what we have highlighted here, reaches the opposite condition from its starting condition. So we're going overbought to oversold, then overbought, sorry, overbought to oversold, and then, you know, oversold back to overbought. And we're using the oscillator line that we choose to use for our analysis. So if we use the yellow line to qualify it for a triple chart trade, we'll use the yellow line. And if we use the gray line slash red line slash green line to qualify for the triple chart chart setup, we'll use that as our exit. All right. So what we're doing is the first thing that needs to happen is whatever line we're using in this example, let's assume it is the yellow line. We want to see it move from overbought above 80 down to oversold. So that's the first requirement is that we move from overbought down to oversold. The next requirement, so this is where we enter and we've moved from overbought down to oversold. The next requirement is that the control changes on the middle time frame, so the bullish bearish control. So we'd come down all the way to this white candle, and this white candle right here would signify the exit of our trade. The oscillator has moved from overbought to oversold, and we switch from bearish control to bullish control. This could, that is our exit indication for a trend trade. But what about counter trend trades? We exit using the smallest time frame being used in the triple chart method for counter trend trades. So here's a counter trend trade. We're moving to the upside, bullish control. We do have lower highs, so this is good. Um, so it's a, a very good counter trend trade setup because we are putting in lower highs. We have our triple chart trade, so everything's there. But what I'm saying is instead of exiting on the middle chart here, we are going to exit on the smallest chart because it's a counter trend trade. And we have to be really, really conservative with this, all right, because it can just snap back the other way very quickly. And there's really only one rule for this. We exit when one condition is met. The smallest time frame reaches the opposite condition from its starting condition from overbought to oversold using the oscillator line that we chose to use for our analysis in the same oscillator line that qualified us for the triple chart setup in the first place. We don't want to wait on bullish bearish control to change. If we wait on bullish bearish control to change, oftentimes we'll be snapped out of the trade. So we're just waiting on these lines to get oversold and then we exit the position. So not as much profitability in these counter trend trades exiting that way, but it can save your life in the long run. All right, so now we move on to step six, which is observe the same charts and others using the other broad market indices. So there's really some things to pay attention. We talked about the tiers in the market. So we have the tier one, which is the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Russell. Those are the four broad indices. Then below that, we have our sectors. And then below that, we have our industries. And then below that, we have our specific stocks and ETFs. So this is an important step. If you're trading one of the four broad market indices, the Dow, the NASDAQ, which is the QQQ, the S&P, which is the SPY, or the Russell, which is the ID. WM, you have, and you have a setup, right? We, you've done all the steps that we've talked about before. You've got a trend or a counter trend setup for triple chart. You'll want to reference the other three indices just to make sure the move that you're trying to play has not already happened on another index. You don't want to be lagging behind other market tickers. So if you're getting set up for an uptrade, you want to make sure that an uptrade hasn't already been underway on another market ticker and is ending. 
there's always front runners and laggards when it comes to the market tickers that you want to be trading one of the front runners. It's always a good idea to at least analyze the other broad market tickers before entering a trade. And if you're trading a stock or another or another ETF, now is when you want to sync your efforts with the movement that's occurring on the same three time frames on the broad market tickers. So if you're trading Tesla, Google, Apple, Amazon, whatever, you and you're trading say 148.92.57, you want to pay attention to what the 148.92 and 57 is doing on the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P as well. And you want to make sure that you are syncing your efforts so that you are heading in the direction of the general market because you want the general market on your team, on your side, and supporting your trade. You don't want to do a triple chart trade to the upside on a ticker if the market is signaling a triple chart trade in the opposite direction on the same time frames. That's a bad idea, and it's not a good recipe for success. Again, if you want to trade the Dow 30, DIA is your ticker, NASDAQ 100, QQQ, s and 500 SPY and the Russell 2000 IWM. These are ETFs that you can trade. They're optionable, weekly options. Everything's good to go, go there should you want to do that. All right. So after you've completed step six, we move to step seven. Wait on the second peak on one of the triple charts. So let's jump into step seven. A lot of words here. All right. So far, we know if we are doing a trend trade or a counter trend trade, bullish or bearish control on the weekly chart. We also know what three charts we're using we're using to trade. A little bit of a typo there but we know if we're doing a daily four hour if we're doing a daily four hour 148 or if we're doing a 148 92 57 or something in between we understand what time frames we're going to be using we know what the broad market is doing because we've looked at the other tickers we've checked earnings you don't have to do this with etfs or trading broad market symbols but if you're trading individual stocks never trade through earnings always know when that is all right we know what chart we're going to use to exit that's step five that's based on whether it's a trend trade or a counter trend trade and the only thing left to do is enter the trade and to do that we're going to wait on a specific signal that i have found very useful over the years and for me if that signal is not there there is no trade but i'll leave that to your discretion because plenty of these still work out fine if the signal doesn't show up i just really like the signal and uh, i use it for my trading i really like it all right so the signal is what i have dubbed the second peak i've never heard anyone else talk about this just an observation i've made over the years now to, to observe the second peak we are always going to look at the fast line of the stock rsi indicator which is the blue line on our profit market indicator so what this is, it's observed by using the fast line of the stock RSI indicator again. And what we're looking for specifically is for that line in particular to put in a lower high or a higher low measuring its most recent peaks and troughs. So what's happening here is assuming that we have an up trade setup. We have a trend trade or a counter trend trade, triple chart trade. Uh, we're looking on the smallest time frame of our triple chart setup. If we have four time frames that line up, we can use the smallest of the four for this. And we're waiting on the blue line to essentially start to trend in the direction of the trade. So what I mean by this is that the blue line clearly drops to a level of about zero right here. It then rises, if you follow my cursor, it rises, then falls and creates this peak. Really, it's a trough because it's an up move, but it would be a peak for a down move. And once this locks in and we see this switch from bearish control to bullish control, this is our final entry indication. And all this is indicating is that we are trending in the right direction on smaller time horizons. And so everything is lined up to support our move to the upside. And you can see where the, where the price eventually goes in this setup but that's what we're looking for with the second peak if it were a move to the downside a second peak would be a lower peak we would follow this blue line with troughs and then peaks and we want to see a lower high in the peak and that would be our signal to move to the downside so here's a trade example where we're looking at the second peak and so we have this counter trend trade we have bullish control on the weekly and a counter trend trade on this counter trend trade, you can see how the blue line falls, peaks back up, and then turns over. So that is our entry indication. That second peak is down here on that blue line on our smallest chart. We also have a small second peak that presents itself here on the middle time frame. And this blue line, I believe, is lower than this previous blue. So a lot of support there looking at the blue line for second peaks. It's just an entry refinement, and it helps me figure out when the move is actually likely to take place in the very near to immediate future. And again, we would be doing all of this on this chart time frame or higher. Uh, that would be where we would expect to find our second peak. 
The signal is found on the smallest of the three charts that you're using. And if you happen to have four charts in a row instead of three, you don't use four charts for the trade, but you can drop down to that smallest chart to find your entry indication. You can also find your entry indication on another ticker from the broad market. So maybe you're looking to trade the SPY and you don't get your second peak on the SPY, but the second peak does present itself on the same charting time frame of the QQQ or the Dow. That is an acceptable second peak entry, all right? It could also show up on larger charts. So just because we're looking at the 57 doesn't mean that it can't show up on a 148 minute time frame. That would also be just as good of an entry if it does, but it has to be present on the smallest time frame in the sequence or higher in order for it to qualify. So up trades have a higher low signal with the, with the blue line, so it's showing a higher low, and then there's a change from bullish to bearish control, sorry, for it would be from bearish to bullish control on that time frame. That would constitute an entry. For down trades, it would be a lower high signal on the blue line, and then there would be a change in bullish or bearish control on that time frame, and that would be an entry for a down trade. And that is how we utilize the second peak. Now, let's talk about step eight, enter the trade. Now, beginners, you just start using stocks and ETFs, and I would suggest that you practice this. No options just yet, but eventually you will you can absolutely use this with options. All right, so at this point, you enter the trade. Now here are the trading styles that I have found suitable for this type of method and where I've seen the highest profitability. Swing trades, lasting three to 10 days using stocks, ETFs, including leveraged ETFs two times or three times, all right? So these are trades where we're looking to trade in the direction of the trend of the weekly chart and we have hold durations of three to 10 days. The other thing that we can do are long options plays, purchasing over a month of time to allow for daily time decay. So my point here is that if you're gonna hold a position for three to 10 days, don't be buying options that expire next week all right that's just it's too tricky uh, you don't have enough time so if you're going to do long options play start off by purchasing over a month of time to allow yourself to not have to battle time decay so much vertical credit spreads once we have these entry points it's a good it's a good place to put on a vertical selling the options with a very high probability of success based on the in the money percentage or the delta so as we've covered here on this channel the vertical credit spread you can sell that where the in the money percentage is very low like it doesn't have a very good chance. It's got a very high chance of expiring worthless and it doesn't have a very good chance of being in the money, maybe only 5% or 10%. It's a good op opportunity. And then currently my favorite method to teach people and to talk about is the binary trading using vertical spreads. Now I have not covered that. That has not been covered on the channel and it will be covered right after this video because I'm excited about it. And I think it works very well. It's actually the, I, I didn't start with the vertical spread I looked at this methodology of trading vertical spreads based on what I know about the triple chart method. So this is a way of putting on a spread that matches the methodology of the triple chart method and I really, really like it. All right, this is currently my preferred method of doing this and as I show people how to do this, such as yourself, it is what I would recommend learning to do um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say you would start there, but that would be the ultimate goal is to get to where you're doing that. More to come on that. That is a very exciting video that I hope to be recording for you sometime uh, in the next week or so. Step nine, uh, we're entered the trade. Now we just have to wait on an exit. So at this point, we have to be patient and let the market do what it's going to do. Some of these trades will be losses and others winners, right? It's all about probabilities. Just because we have checked all the boxes doesn't mean that we're going to be winners. It just means that we have done the work and we have done what we can to put the odds of success on our side of the ledger. We do not get to determine which trades are winners and which trades are losers. There's nothing for us to do after we enter the trade because we're powerless. The only thing that we can do at that point in time is exit the trade. So our job is to stay calm and remember that we are trading using probabilities and therefore as long as we keep our math in check we will be just fine there are four types of exits that i can think of so we have a trend trade profitable exit so this is one of those trades where the triple chart trade setup is in the same direction as the trend as we determined it on the weekly chart and the position has moved in our direction so it's a profitable exit so here what we do is wait we wait on the oscillator from the middle time frame we use the middle time frame because it's a trend chart trade all right we wait on that oscillator to change its conditions from over bought to oversold or oversold to oversold to oversold to overbought and then give us a change from bullish to bearish control. So essentially we're using the exit that we talked about for trend trades. We exit when both of those conditions are met. Great. All right. Or if you have a vertical on and you are where you want to be, you could just let that vertical expire worthless to collect all of the premium. 
for your credit spread. That's that's also another way that you can just exit. Trend trade and you have an unprofitable exit. It went against you. It didn't go in your direction. There's two types of these. The first one is a trade that goes in your direction at first after the entry. In other words, there is some profitability in the position. We want to make our exit the same as the price level we entered at. So what are we saying? If we're in a trend trade and it starts moving in our direction, we put essentially a mental stop back at our entry point. So if it backs up to our entry point, we go ahead and exit. And this makes this a break even trade. The truth is, is if you use this triple chart method and you use that second peak on a trade that's going to be a good trade, that second peak is going to nail that entry and the price is likely to take off from that point or very soon after. And once it leaves that area, it's not likely to come back. If it does, that trade is likely failing and you should go ahead and sell for break even. Now, I'm not talking about a few ticks. So if you're in a trade on a $100, $100 symbol or a $400 symbol like the SPY and it moves in your direction 20 cents, I'm not saying put a stop at your entry point. But I am saying if you get a good solid day or half a day of movement where you've moved a half a percent or a percent in your desired direction, go ahead and prepare yourself to exit the trade if it goes back to your entry point. All right. That way you just have a break even trade. No harm, no foul, no loss. All right. I have some examples of that coming in a separate example video I was going to go ahead and do that for you but uh, this video is going to get a little bit long and so for a coaching video for the for the members I'm going to do a dissection of some trade examples following these steps just to point out how these steps presented themselves in the trade setups all right so that's the that's the unprofitable exit for trend trade that's the first case it's break even but what about a trade that goes immediately against us it doesn't really go into profitability then we just have to use the triple chart method to you for for analysis right instead of chart setups we use analysis and how we use analysis is we find the triple chart trades and we know that if it's a trend trade the middle time frame is likely to move all the way from overbought to oversold and if it's a counter trend trade the smallest of the three time frames is likely to move from overbought to oversold so we can kind of use that information to figure out where the price is likely heading and um, how to minimize our loss or when we should take our loss and so there's another video coming out on that too and it's just it's just about managing losing trades right then we have three which is a counter trend trade and you have a profitable exit again we just use the same exit rules as counter trend trades here we wait on the oscillators from the smallest of the three time frames that we're using for the triple chart method and when that first candle closes after the condition with the oscillator is met moving from overbought to oversold or oversold to overbought we just go ahead and exit and then if it continues to go in that direction uh, and it would have given you a whole lot of profitability had you stayed you can't pay attention to that just block it out of your mind because the practice of exit exiting counter trend trades early is a very good practice because if you start waiting too long on counter trend trades eventually you will suffer a large loss counter trend trading unprofitable exits there's two types of these so same as I mentioned earlier, if it goes in your direction after the entry, you want to make your exit the same as the price level you entered at. Again, the second peak helps you really pinpoint when the price is about to take off. And if it doesn't take off in your direction, something's up, right? It's probably not going to be the robust trade that you thought it would be. All right. So try to make it a break even trade by moving your stop up to your entry point. Once you have a little bit of profitability in the position and for a trade that goes immediately against you, well, then we have to figure that out by analyzing and trying to make the most intelligent decisions that we can to minimize the impact of the loss. At that point in time, we are going to take a loss. It's just a matter of how do we minimize that loss? And that's a skill set in and of itself. But now we've exited the positions and we're at step 10, which is repeat the process. Now that seems easy, but the thing about repeating the process is when, when do you repeat the process? You have to stay patient. All right. Swing trading can make you a lot of money in the markets. It's not sexy. A lot of people want to do day trades, but swing trading on larger time frames can absolutely make you a fortune, but you have to have patience. And it's one of the most difficult things to grow into as a trader. The trades will come to you. There's nothing that you have to do in order for the trade to present itself. You don't have to do anything in between trades other than work on something else that moves your life towards your goals. Don't just sit there and stare at the stock market. Start that business you've always thought about, right? You know, I'm a big proponent of that. Spend time with your kids. Whatever is on your goal list that is lacking, go to work on that. All right. But don't force anything in the market. Be patient. All right. We know from looking at history, just with the methodology that I taught in this presentation and just using a couple of tickers from the broad market index, we will get two to three very good trade setups per month. 
You go, that's only two to three trade setups. Yeah, but they're high probability trade setups. And if played correctly, and if played with the methodologies that I will teach in subsequent videos, you can have some really astounding returns over time. But it'll, it will be your patience that determines your success, not necessarily your knowledge of market setups. So if you need to set alerts and position yourself so that you can have a schedule that allows you to that allows you access to check the market. All right, the smallest chart we will be using to trade this way is the 57, because remember, I said that the smallest charts that I will use is a 148.9257. So in a real trade, the smallest chart I'm going to be using is a 57. So as long as you can see the market once per hour, you can use the 57. You'll be just fine to look for a bullish trade using the triple chart setup. QQQ 930, which is the opening of July 27th, 2022. There's a bullish trade there for you to study. QQQ 930 on July 22nd, 2022. There's a bearish trade for you to study. So go ahead and look those up. Figure out whatever questions you have. Type Type them in the comments. Um, I don't always respond directly in the comments, but I always read it. Um, if you don't think so, I now know how to say cyan. <laughs> I always talk about that color cayenne. Uh, I know I sound like such a big dummy to you all that know how to say it, but I read the comments and I can see it cyan. So cyan is how I will is the is the is how you say c y a n. That color is cyan. I've been saying cayenne my whole life. Thank you for that. Thank you for that little tidbit of information. I'll do it correctly uh, going forward. So I'm excited about the triple chart method. Go in, dissect this video, pay attention to those details. I scripted this entire video so that I would not forget anything, which means that every little detail is extremely important. Don't just kind of glaze over and skip over parts of this. Every single piece of what I just explained to you has a very important meaning um, and a very important function with regard to the overall success of this methodology. Um, I do believe that if you can acquire this skill, if you can grasp this, that it can make a huge difference for your long-term market results, your morale, your trading results just in general, but it's a bit of an adjustment.